Hi everybody, welcome to art class. Today we are going to do a scene called From My Window. Um, you will need uh, any drawing paper. If you don't have drawing paper, printer paper is fine as well. You don't have to go out and buy any special art paper um, because we're not doing watercolor. However, if you do have an art pad at home, you are welcome to use that. We will need a pencil, an eraser, we will need a regular Sharpie, or if you have a fine Sharpie that works as well, and we will need our basic Crayola color pencils. Um, I have yellow, I have orange, I have red, I have light and dark blue, I have light and dark green, I have purple and brown. So let's begin. This is from my window. So the first thing that we are going to do is draw with a pencil. We are going to draw with a pencil, but I am going to use a Sharpie just so that you can see very clearly what I'm doing. Okay, boys and girls? And if parents are joining in, that would be fun as well. And here we go. So the first thing that I am doing is I am making a line across. As you can see, this is about four fingers from the top edge of my paper. And then I am making a line down just like that. I'm going to finish it over here and connect them. It's almost like a big rectangle. So I have a line extended on this side. And on this side, I think about one finger space. Let's go ahead and add an oval on both sides, just like that. Now, one of the first rules that I always encourage my students to remember is to draw it light till we get it right. That's because we are going to erase these lines on the side because this is where our curtain is going to come in. So I'm going to start drawing out a curtain line just going like that. And then another line covering out which is not quite straight. Do you see that? The same thing follows on this side just like a long fabric hanging down now do you see how these lines are going to be erased boys and girls so I'm gonna flip my paper over and show you the parts that we are going to erase which is the rectangle that we drew first on the sides so let's go ahead and erase this part that's inside the curtain and all this which we don't need anymore and I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to catch up with me and erase the lines that go inside here inside the curtain not the ledge not the top line but just inside the curtain And I have my other picture ready for you right here. Okay. So I took out my line. I erased it. I also added a few lines to show the effect of a fabric. And let's show that right here. The first thing I'm doing is taking my Sharpie. And tracing the line so you all can see it. Boys and girls, I don't want you to do that just yet. I want you to only focus on drawing with a pencil. I have to use a Sharpie so that you all can see. 
what I'm doing. And this is my curtain with the final folds in the fabric to make it look very, very realistic. I did one side and this is my second side right here. Nice and slow. If you trace nice and slow and you go on the line every time, it makes a big difference. There you go. And here is my bottom ledge, if you can see, right somewhere around here. So we had one line, I'm gonna double it up. And I'm adding another ledge right over here, which looks like the window. And we have our beautiful window ready. Okay, boys and girls, I think you must have erased your lines, gotten this ready, and your art should look like this. The next thing that we are going to do is add something inside. And for me, the most requested um, landmark is the Eiffel Tower. I have realized that every time we are doing something at the art studio, you always want to learn how to draw the Eiffel Tower. So why not try that today? So the first thing that we are going to do is add a little bit of perspective in our art. So I'm going to add a line about three fingers in from the top of the sledge. And the same thing goes on the other side and connect it halfway. Do you see that? Also, I would like to add a pathway that goes towards the center of the paper. And we need two lines coming out from here, just like that. So I have one line over here, which is going to become our horizon. And another line going inside. It's just like two lines going inside like that and here we will add some trees I think about three trees is just right you can add more if you wish and I will do the same right here I'm gonna add the tree trunk on the corner and one tree first and then the second one connected to it right there and then the third and then this is going to be the curve for the base of the tower so i made a half circle very lightly first if you can see that and then once you get it right you can go ahead and back it up with a darker line always remember the golden rule light Till you get it right. So here is the base of our tower just coming out somewhere where your lines are ending and then I add the sides over here just like that. So you have the base and the pathway leading up to the Eiffel Tower. Next we are going to add another curve a half circle on top then we will add a shorter line it's not as wide as this line because if you notice the tower usually points towards a triangle just like that so do you see that boys and girls once you know that it's pretty easy to go all the way to the top there you go so this is my second line right here and then you want to back this up a little bit and you also want to back this up a little bit. And the last but most tricky part. So we have our line right here going straight down. We have a little T over here on the top. And just to make this as 
realistic as possible. We have to curve the line down slightly. This is what you do. You come straight down halfway and then when you reach the middle, you start turning it inside and curve it towards the outside just like that. The same goes on the other side. You come straight down and then make a nice shape that curves inside. After that, it's pretty easy. You have to treat both as individual sections and make cross hatching lines. I start off with a V at the top right here, and then I start going in a cross hatch section by section. Both sides can be equal. And then I'm going to go ahead and go the other way, cross hatch it, make a series of lines that are showing the grids on the tower, and we are almost done. Now, once you're done with this, you want to then use a fine Sharpie or a regular Sharpie, depending on which one you have. You could also use a black Crayola color pencil to trace, but when you use a Sharpie, it makes a big difference. One more thing that I would like to add is some clouds to show movement in the air. You want to cover up a part of it. You want to show some that are behind the tower. You can do a couple more here and maybe some on the top like that. This finishes up our drawing for the Eiffel Tower. I am going to use my Sharpie and trace the lines. Go nice and slow. On the line every time. There you go. I will also post a colored picture at the end of the video to see how it looks. You always want to work from the lighter colors to the darker colors sideways. You can use crayons or color pencils, but start off with the light shades, back them up with a darker shadow under the cloud with the dark blue, just like that. For the trees, I always like to add a little bit of yellow, light green and dark green. So I'm going to do a little bit of yellow. Make sure you erase your pencil lines before you start to color. And then you can do a little bit of yellow and then some dark light green and a little bit of dark green just at the edges, just like that. I have some brown for the tree trunks. I have some brown for the tower as well. But I love to add a touch of orange and red to the towers. I'm going to show you that in just a bit. Just like that. Very light. The curtains would look nice with a little bit of orange and red as well. So when you go ahead and color in with your pencil, make sure to darken up the curtains with a little bit of red right by the folds, so that will emphasize the folds, and make it look very realistic. Go ahead with some red. You don't have to go for red curtains. I just did it because I like the contrast against the blue sky. I added some purple shadows inside the tower. There's also some buildings in the distance if you want to add some buildings. You can use purple right there. And then some windows just like that. And I have a picture of the finished video towards the end. You can check that out. If you have more colors, you can use that. 
I know there's some students who are going to say, if I was in the studio, can I add silver in the tower, Miss Radhika? And I would be, of course. You want to add any color, it's your choice. You can go ahead and add that. I just love to go nice and slow, light at first, and then you want to darken it as you go along. And happy coloring!